Situation awareness is a great starting place for learning about human factors. Flying a plane and delivering babies are obviously very different, but the airline industry has led the way in learning from high profile events and I'm pleased to see maternity care following in their footsteps. In the Each Baby Counts report, I was not surprised to learn that the loss of SA was a key theme running through many serious incident reviews. My organisation will put human factors at the heart of our investigations and I hope this video and the associated materials will help teams across the country to implement the learning drawn out of this vital report. The first time you lose situational awareness will probably be the first time you ever knew you had it. Have you ever felt like this before? We have all stood on the labour ward in the middle of the night after a complex delivery and not recognised half the women on the board. Situational awareness is knowing what's going on around you and reacting appropriately to it, having the bigger picture or taking the helicopter view. So how do we get it, maintain it and make use of it? The first part of situational awareness is gathering information. Perception. On the lay board we are bombarded with information from all angles, written, verbal, non-verbal, electronic and even just things we're meant to know. We can improve situational awareness by improving the quality of information we supply to decision makers, by keeping clear quality records and using structured handover tools for communication. The next thing we have to do is to make sense of that information so we can understand what is happening right now. Comprehension. At this point, we use our filters to work out what information means by putting it into context. Finally, we use this information to predict what can happen in the future. Projection. The better our knowledge and experience is, the more accurate the projection will be. We then need to communicate our situational awareness to the rest of the team so they also understand what's happening. Situational awareness has many different levels. From a delivery suite room, to the overview of labour ward, across units in the hospital, and further to regional and national levels. Hang on, this is too far. We are only dealing with the labour ward. OK, so how do we actually achieve situational awareness here? Let's talk about handover. This is a critical point where we share ideas and develop a common goal. A safe birth for mum and baby. So what does a good handover look like? Well, we should have multidisciplinary handovers. This means that we are all able to receive the same information, develop the same understanding, the same plans and goals. This is called having a shared mental model and is key to maintaining situational awareness. We don't have fixed teams on Labour Ward, so every day we have to form a new one, sometimes with people we barely know. Introductions are essential. We all know what we would like to see on the board, but we need to make sure that this information supports situational awareness. It needs to be legible, up to date, accurate and concise. The information here supports our perception. Our discussions with our team members supports our comprehension and shared mental model. And the board is a place for us to document our projections. This means the plan. Try to reduce distractions and interruptions during the handover, as this is how key information can be lost. If you want to interrupt the handover, take a moment to reflect. Do you need this information now or can it wait? If this happens, pause, resolve the distraction, check for understanding and continue. So, after handover, who has a helicopter view and how do we maintain it? Firstly, we need to have a clear leader. Their role is to understand what is happening, engage the team with appropriate tasks and make sure that progress is being made towards the team goal. Here, our leader is a senior registrar, but it could equally be a senior midwife, consultant or somebody acting up on that day. What is important is that everybody knows who is leading. But what happens if the leader gets busy? We all know this happens a lot and this is where things can begin to go wrong. The answer lies in delegation because we can't multitask. Understanding your working memory is key to understanding why we are all bad at multitasking. Typically you can only hold five things in your working memory but it is highly affected by other factors. If you're stressed, tired, hungry or just need a wee, your capacity to hold things in your working memory drops up to three times. So at our worst, which, let's face it, is where most of us are 10 hours into a shift, you might only be able to remember two items of information. You might only need one thing to knock a key fact out of your memory. What happens if the registrar has to do a complex technical task, like a forceps delivery? Who would maintain situational awareness on the labour ward? If you are task-focused, you cannot have the helicopter view. 
Here, the senior registrar solves this by asking the midwife to inform the coordinator that they have to take situation awareness. Notice also that the midwife comes back and informs the senior registrar that she has done this. She closes the loop. What happens if the doctor and coordinator are occupied with emergencies? Who has a helicopter view? It would be the most senior doctor on call. We all know this, but are we happy to ask for help? Here, the coordinator is assisting with an emergency. The doctors are busy and a midwife realises that she needs to call the consultant for help. We mustn't be frightened to ask for help. If we don't call for help, then nobody senior has overall situation awareness of the labour ward. It is this loss of situation awareness that has contributed to many of the Each Baby Counts tragedies. You wouldn't hesitate to call for a major obstetric hemorrhage, so don't hesitate for when you lose situational awareness. Here, the consultant answers an emergency bell. This is a shoulder dissocia, and she is asked to carry out the manoeuvres. Notice how the consultant is task focused. She is unaware of time passing. When the midwife tells her it has been five minutes now, the consultant tries something else. In an emergency, we must communicate clearly and directly. Although the junior doctor can't complete the manoeuvres, he still knows the sequence and timings and could easily take the helicopter view. To do this, they need to state confidently that they are taking the lead. There are five signs that you might be losing situational awareness. Feeling confused, conflict within the team, feeling increasingly stressed, discovering key information has been missed, or something just not feeling quite right. If we ever lose situational awareness, we use safety huddles to regain it. These are quick meetings between senior clinicians to update everybody on new developments. In summary, situational awareness is simply knowing what's going on around you and reacting appropriately to it. Top tips to help you achieve situational awareness are hand over with the whole team present and avoid or address distractions. Keep the label board, board pristine. It's key to our shared understanding of what is going on. Don't try to multitask because we can't. Delegate the role of leader if you become task focused and accept delegations from others. Ask for help with situational awareness if you know your perception differs from the teams. And use safety huddles to restore your situational awareness. This video is part of an implementation package that's been produced at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital for Each Baby Counts. Have a look at the Each Baby Counts page on the RCOG website for training tools and further information to help your team apply some of these concepts and ideas discussed in the Each Baby Counts report and in this video. Please share all of these resources widely and help us move towards our goal of reducing the number of babies who die or are injured during or shortly after birth. Thanks for watching and for your engagement with Each Baby Counts and the RCOG.